Well, let's acknowledge ourselves for whatever we need to. Only, only you know how much less crazy you were this week than you've been in previous <laughs> So you're the one that needs to congratulate yourself for your behavior in the last week. It's all relative, you know? You know, it's just, you know. So uh, we, we're in the lessons, we're going to be in the lessons of the Holy Spirit which is on one oh, we'll start over. So it's gonna be on 103, the lessons of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> if you're new to the Course in Miracles, if you're new to the Course in Miracles, the only thing you need to remember is that you don't have to believe it. Okay, that's it, that's the only guideline. And the lessons of the Holy Spirit are giving you the way to have everything that you want. That's kind of cool. It it tells you, in other words, it says, well, what is it that what is it that love is teaching me? What is my higher self teaching me? What what is God teaching me? What what's the truth teaching me? Because the only purpose of the Course in Miracles is to be able to tell the difference between when you're telling yourself the truth and when you're telling yourself a lie, and when somebody else is telling you the truth and somebody else is telling you a lie. I'll say that one more time. The only purpose of the Course in Miracles is to teach you how to tell the difference between when you're getting ready to fool yourself again and when you're really getting ready to give yourself something real. The only purpose of the Course in Miracles is to teach us how to tell the difference between when we're getting ready to do something we've already tried before that doesn't work and when you're really getting ready to do something that's going to really result in a different outcome how to tell the difference, because it claims that we don't have the slightest idea how to tell the difference between love and fear, truth and a lie, and I would like to say that's true for me. Uh, my own personal experience shows me that I don't always know when I'm choosing for what appears to be the best for me. And I know New Age and New uh, Age thought say everything is for your own best interest, even the Course says everything is for your own best interest, but I don't mind not putting my hand into a fire to know that it will be burned. So I can I, I don't mind learning the lesson without the pain. So it's teaching me how to learn the lesson without the pain. So the first paragraph in the lessons of the Holy Spirit, it says, and I'm gonna read the paragraph and then I'm gonna give you the modern language translation really quick. Okay? It says, like any good teacher, the Holy Spirit knows more than you do, because any good teacher would know more than you do. <laughs> This is the funniest book in the world when you read it before. <laughs> and a good teacher knows more than you, Jones. Right. <laughs> and a good teacher is only going to teach you to make you equal with the teacher. So if I'm a good teacher, I just want you to know as much as I know or more. If I'm a good music teacher, I want my, and I teach saxophone, I want my student to learn how to play better than me. Uh, he says, now, he says, you have already taught yourself wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> and because you taught yourself what's not true, you believe what's not true, so you're teaching yourself wrong, wrong. And then he says, well, what is it that's true that I don't believe? He says, well, you don't believe in your perfection. <clears throat> Ask anybody in here if they're perfect, and they'll probably be proud to say, no, I'm not. <laughs> I bet you. Bet you if, I, if you tell somebody they're perfect, the first thing they're going to do, oh, no, me, I'm not really that perfect. You just really don't know me. If you really knew me, you sure would not be perfect. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't be a member of any club that would have me. <clears throat> so you didn't believe in your own perfection, and would God teach you that you made a split mind when your creator knows your mind only is one? If I know that you have a, if I know that your mind is one, would I teach you that you have a divided mind? He says what God does know is that God's communication channels are not open to God, so that God cannot impart God's joy and know God's children is totally joyous because guess what? We're not open to it. It says we're not open to the creator, so therefore we don't experience the joy. Mm -hmm. Then it says, giving God's joy is an ongoing process. Not in time, but in eternity. The joy is always going on, but certainly it says not in time. In time, it doesn't look like the joy is happening all the time. Right. Is that true? Mm -hmm. And he says it right in the book. Well, joy is going on all the time, but you jokers, y'all somehow missing the part. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm here to give you a special invitation out of your misery. Yay. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> All right? Don't shoot the messenger. I didn't write this book. Okay? I'm not here to defend it. <laughs> I love this. It's God extending out with though God's completeness is blocked when the children don't communicate with God as one and so the creator thought, my children sleep. Mm -hmm. And they must be awakened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's paragraph one. <coughs> so here you go. Now, the course says the Holy Spirit is a loving right mind. The ego is nothing but a frightened mind that thinks it's separate. So a loving right man, which is the Holy Spirit, is going to teach you only to make you equal or the same. So if, I, if, I, if I'm in the presence of a loving man, then I know this person is only trying to see me as equal to them. So anybody that's trying to make me feel like they're inferior, infer or inferior to me or I'm superior or inferior to them, I know that that's a person that's lying to me. As <laughs> soon as you try to make me different, I know you're telling me a lie. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to call you one to your face. <laughs> I just know you're lying to me which means that what you're saying, you're not going to be able to do all the time. Mm -hmm. And that it's not really true. Then it says, now then Spirit came to me and says, do you know that you believe that you are not perfect, meaning whole and complete? Mm -hmm. That you don't believe that you don't really need anything outside of yourself? Do you know that your creator knows your mind as only whole, complete, and one? Do you realize that the Creator knows that you are not open to the Creator? And so the Creator can extend His joy through you and know that you are joyful. Why, why can't the joy come through me? The joy can't come through you, Earl, because you're not open to the Creator of the joy. You don't even believe the Creator of the joy exists, and you pride yourself in believing that the Creator of the joy doesn't exist. <clears throat> you believe you're the Creator of the joy so much, Earl, that all day long you're trying to name your happiness. Mm. I don't know what my happiness is. It's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I know what my happiness is. It's sex. I know what my happiness is. It's them getting rid of the debit card fees. <laughs> I know what happiness is. It's not the Republicans being elected. <laughs> I know what happiness is. It's not the Democrats being elected. Play it safe. <laughs> we name it. Mm -hmm. So God's giving us joy as an ongoing process in eternity, but joy doesn't happen as an ongoing process in time. So in, so in time, you're not going to be happy all the time. Y'all hear that? <laughs> Me and that baby, we trained for that moment, man. We had been working all week, but just when I said in that moment, the baby go, ah, ah. It's too late. You can't go back. You hear that? You hear the rest of the guy, buddy. We gonna love you up. You so you, look where you landed. We know how you feel about yourself. Look at the room you landed in. Where, where a room full of people trying to forgive themselves for prom night. <laughs> I felt so guilty about my prom night. I went to prom in 11th grade. And I felt so guilty about my, what I did on my prom night. The next year, prom was canceled. <laughs> Martin Luther King got assassinated died in Memphis the year I graduated. Mm -hmm. Blew my whole thing. I had it all planned. Yeah. Oh. That's all right. I'm, I'm forgiving Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize that your creator has will that you wake up from your sleep of forgetting the truth? and wake up from your sleep of forgetting what's really real? Any questions about paragraph one? Well, a good teacher, they tell you what they're going to tell you, then they tell you what they're going to tell you, then they tell you what they told you. Okay? Okay. I told you that the first paragraph, 
the first thing I told you is that if it's, if it's real, it's going to be something that you see as equal to you and you see as equal to it. So you don't want to be in relationships where it seems like there's any form of inequality. The next thing that we heard is that the reason why we have so many problems is that we've forgotten that we're perfect. That means there's nothing missing in us and that we're whole and complete. The reason why we're not happy is because we're not open to our creator, so our creator cannot extend his joy through us because we're not open to our creator. Okay, everybody got paragraph one. <laughs> Any questions or comments about paragraph one? <laughs> So why aren't we happy if we aren't happy? Mm -hmm. I'm not open to my creator. Why aren't we open? Why aren't I open? Because of what you learned. That's the only thing that's keeping me from being open right now, something I've learned in the past that I'm using right now. It's telling me not to be open to my creator, or even tells me I don't even have a creator to be open to. And even if I don't believe I have a creator to be open to, I'm the one that taught myself that. I'm the one that's still accepting that it's true. So none of us should be surprised at the things that don't happen to us when we don't believe in what created us. None of us should be shocked if our lives are not going right if we're not in touch with that which extends joy. Why are we shocked that relationships aren't working when I'm not even in a relationship to that with that which created me? And I'm looking for somebody else to give me the specialness that my creator didn't give me. Nobody else has singled me out as special. You are going to. And I call you my lover. And if you don't, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody got that? <clears throat> Why is it that we're not experiencing joy? Because we're not open to our creator. We're not being open to our creator. If somebody's telling you the truth, but they say they're superior to you or inferior to you, they say they were neither one. We're equal. You always want to go to a teacher that seems like they know more than you know, but all they're trying to do is get you to the point that you know as much as they know or more. But you would like them to know. Like in other words, I, I've studied the Course in Miracles for 31 years. I deem to say I'm probably familiar with it. So I could probably save you some time <laughs> if you let me. But if I do it right, you will learn more about this than me and be able to teach me better than I could teach you. But if you're spending your time not trusting the teacher, then you need to get out of that class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If somebody come to my class and all they're doing is distrusting me and being suspicious of my purpose, they shouldn't come to my class. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody miss you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cold. <laughs> I'm long, long past missing somebody that don't appreciate me. Yeah. I'm long past that stage. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. I, I, that's, that's not arrogant. That's not arrogant. That's the truth. I'm just telling you the truth. I, I don't want people who don't like me to come to my class. Who think I'm lying to them or deceiving them or trying to get something from them or trying to put, please don't come. Take that suspicion, that suspicion somewhere else. <laughs> to a more guilty teacher. Because they'll love it. Because all you deserve is love, and I'm trying to be, be, be a, a way for the love to come through me to you by communicating to you the truth about you, which is something loving about you. That's, that's, it. that's the only reason why I'm sitting here. Now, if, you, if a person challenges that motive, they're in the wrong place. Even if I'm the biggest liar in the world, you ought to side with the idea that you should be happy if it comes out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it don't mean I have to mean it, but that doesn't mean it's not true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could deserve love, and I think you don't. And I tell you, I, you, do, you, you do, but I don't think you don't, but you do. Don't make how you feel depend on nobody else. Don't make how you feel depend on nobody else. Don't make how you feel depend on anybody else. Don't make how you feel depend on anybody else. Don't give nobody that much power over you. Because if they don't love themselves, they're going to manipulate you and themselves. And guess what? When they get through manipulating you all over the place, they wouldn't have done nothing to you. Because who you are is beyond destruction. Oh, you heard that. You, did, did you hear that? I heard that. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. I know sometimes I forget, especially when the mosquito bite me. 
I can be, I'm the holy son of God himself. I am the lip. Damn. <laughs> Bring me some old. <laughs> Y'all don't see the joke. I really don't get the joke. <laughs> Unlimited beings being chased around by mosquitoes. <laughs> Unlimited beings dying eating cantaloupe. <laughs> Y'all don't get that that's got to be a biggest tragedy or the biggest joke yeah. that's ever been created. That we, we live in the biggest insane tragedy that's ever been invented. Uh -huh. Or this is a joke that we're forgetting to laugh at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's got to be one or the other. God has got to be the cruelest thing that ever existed if there is one. Or we're missing something. <laughs> Y'all, and we all saying enough to come to that conclusion, right? That's why we rebel against a lot of the stuff that we were taught, because we, we see it's crazy. And you better believe our kids see our craziness better than we saw our parents. Yeah. That's why they rebel. They want to have happiness. <laughs> they know if they listen to you, they'll never have a good time. <laughs> That's why you had fun and disobeyed your parents. <laughs> Where's fun? On the other side, anything my mama tells me not to do. <laughs> my mama is not very happy. <laughs> now, if she was happy, I paid more attention to it. But my mama miserable, I might not want to follow her advice. <laughs> you might not want to the broke person's advice <laughs> to how to have wealth. I'm just going to tell you that. Yeah. Unless they point to somebody else who has it. Huh. See, that's what I'm doing. I can't pull out nothing I'm telling you all completely, but I got sense enough to at least just pass a message along to you <laughs> so I can hear it too. Yeah. I'm just like you all now. I'm telling you, I got an ego. They're like you. I'm not going to do it right all the time. I promise you, I can keep that promise. <laughs> <laughs> I just started making promises I can always keep. Mm -hmm. Now I never break a promise. I promise you I'm going to be inconsistent. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I promise I'm going to be around you sometimes, and sometimes I'm going to be way away from any of y'all. I promise. I promise I'll be loving sometimes and frightened sometimes. I promise. I promise. I promise I believe in God sometimes, and sometimes I wonder if it's God at all. I promise. The next paragraph is going to cover how we are going to be awakened. And it also shares how you wake somebody else up. Because if you wake them up the wrong way, they may smack you in the jaw. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. Sometimes when you're sleeping and somebody try to wake you up, you, you make feel like they're part of the nightmare that you have. And when you're having a nightmare, then you smack them in the face and be choking them to death with your eyes closed and be kill them. <laughs> and you wake up and they're dead. But you didn't really mean to do it. You were just asleep killing something in your own mind. That's what we do every day. So how do you wake children in a more kindly way than by a gentle voice that will not frighten the children? The gentle voice will merely remind the children that the night is over, Earl. The night is over. The light has come. You don't inform the children that the nightmares that frighten them so badly are not real. You don't inform them that the nightmares that frighten them so badly aren't real. You don't tell them what they're going through is not real. Because children believe in magic. Children believe in what's not true. Children believe in what they see in their imagination. So what do you do? You really reassure the child that was frightened is waking up that they're safe right now. You reassure them that they're safe right now. Then you train them. Train them. We're being trained. Then you train them to recognize the difference between sleeping and waking. I wake you up gently, and then I train you to tell the difference between when you're lying to yourself and when you're telling yourself the truth, when you're in the presence of love and when you're in the presence of fear, when you're in the presence of what's true and when you're not, I'm going to wake you up kindly, but I'm going to teach you how to tell the difference between when you're asleep and when you're awake. Why? So that you finally understand that you can call on the light and the truth for yourself when you need it, even when I'm not around. Mm. See, I want, you, I, want, I want to get you to the point that I'll teach you to dial 911 if you're my child so that you would dial 911 if I'm not around. So whatever is scaring you, the cause is saying that which created us is going to teach us how to take ourselves out of our fear when we think it's not around. Boom. That was paragraph two. Any questions about paragraph two? Yes. Okay, so it says, um, and so when bad dreams come, they will themselves call on the light. 
to dispel them. And I guess my hang up is that like like things will come up and I pray over and over, like Holy Spirit decides for God for me, give me correct perception and truth, and the ways beyond my walls and imaginations. And I still the stuff is still there. And so I guess I need to learn patience, right? And, and it's so it sounds like it to me. That just it's because true. I said the prayer once it doesn't like poof go away. Well right? actually actually as soon as you said the prayer, then you received the answer. Now you're just seeing what you had to let go of so that you could see the answer. You have to answer as soon as you ask for it. The only thing that's keeping you from seeing is what you're telling yourself right now. To What you're saying right now is what's keeping you from seeing the answer. And what you're telling yourself right now is that the answer isn't there right now. And since you're telling yourself the answer isn't there right now, you don't see the answer right now, do you? No, I don't. But did you just say that you didn't see the answer right now? Yeah. Okay, that's why. Okay. So, so what's going to happen is you keep on listening to the truth until you lose your resistance to hearing the answer. And when you lose your resistance to hearing the answer, you will hear the answer that's always been there, but you weren't listening to it because you were afraid of it. So as long as a person is afraid of an answer, there is no answer that will satisfy them. There will be no answer that they will even say is an answer. So as long as you're not ready to be healed, you'll always say, I don't hear the answer. I don't recognize the answer. That's you still being afraid of the answer. So what you should ask for is, what would it take for all fear of hearing the truth to be removed from my life in ways beyond my wildest imagination? How can I lose my fear of hearing the truth in ways beyond my wildest imagination? Because you're going to find out one day that the answers to everything you were asking, you heard in all these classes you came to, but it just wasn't the answer that you made up. And since it wasn't the answer that you decided it is, you couldn't hear the answer that I gave you. And that's what everybody does. They come to a class to hear the answer that they made up. <clears throat> they call it, oh, I agree with that. I resonate with that. That really, that sounds like exactly what I was, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> but that might not be always the right answer. It might not always be what you want to hear. The right answer is going to be the truth. And whether you want to hear it or not is dependent on how much you are ready to let go of your own suffering. You hear the answer to the degree to which you're ready to let go of your own suffering. You hear the answer to the degree that you're willing to let go of your own suffering. And I'll share something else with you. You are not the one who wakes you up. You're like the person that's asleep that's trying to wake themselves up from within the sleep. But you sleep. You need somebody to wake you up. So as long as I'm listening to this from the perspective that I've got to do this on my own, then I've lost, I still don't have a point of the whole book. This is not a book, another book to help us figure out how to do everything on our own. And this is not a book that's teaching us that we're not going to be loved and helped unless we understand how help works and love works. You reach the level of consciousness where your understanding and comprehension doesn't have anything to do with what you receive that it's utterly unimportant to higher consciousness whether or not we understand what it's saying. All higher consciousness wants us to do is to welcome it and allow it to work in our lives. Mm -hmm. Come on. How do you let higher consciousness know that you're ready for it to wake in, or work in your life? The way, you, the way you let higher consciousness know that you are ready for it to work in your life is exhibiting a little bit of willingness to listen, which you've already done just by showing up. This is the example of a little bit of willingness to listen. <laughs> We're perfect examples of little bit of willingness to listen. Yeah. And that's all we need. Isn't that good? Yeah. Isn't that good news? That's good news. I like being in a thought system that tells me regardless of what I think about myself, I will be helped. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, if my belief creates my reality, if my reality is coming from my thoughts, why wouldn't I want a thought like that? Mm -hmm. That even when I'm the meanest person in the world, somebody will love me. I want that thought. Mm -hmm. Rather than nobody's going to love me unless I act right and please them the way they want to be pleased. Which one of those thoughts would you buy from the thought store? If you love yourself, you buy the first one. I want to be loved regardless of what it looks like I'm doing. Yeah. If you don't love yourself, you've got a million conditions on love. 
You got a million conditions on what it's going to take for somebody to receive your love. You got a million conditions on what it's going to take for you to give your love. If you're a really fearful person, your love is so conditionally that only somebody that wanted to be controlled and manipulated would love you. Because nobody who really wanted to be loved would put themselves under the tyranny of another person who's telling them exactly what they can do all the time. No one who knows what love is would even love a person like that. So that's what's so cool. That's why you know you always attract people just like you so that y'all can learn how to be how you really want to be together. So you better believe any flaw you see in anybody in your, in your life, that's the flaw that's going on in your own mind too. So if it's okay to criticize them, but you got to put yourself in there too. You can't say, my mama's selfish without saying, and I am too. <laughs> my boss is stupid and don't pay attention, and I do too. <laughs> and unless you put, and me too, and, and I do too, then you are, you're not having equality, so therefore you're not creating a situation that can be healed because healing ain't going to happen as long as we're different. Some healing going to happen when we start to recognize we're the same. So as long as you want to make somebody different is as long as you want to stay in disharmony and conflict with them. When you're really ready for an argument to be solved, y'all will both be saying, you know, honey, I'm just like that. I do that sometime. I've done that before. We both do that. How can we both go beyond that together? End of argument. And you move on. And you move on immediately because now you're not antagonists. You're saviors. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't spend 10 minutes with a person now that I was always oppo I was opposing them and they were opposing me every second in the name of our complementary differences and uniquenesses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I want somebody headed in the same direction that I'm headed and that's a direction that says I only want love. Love, 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 love. I only want love. Anybody who only wants love, join me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to do it, but we got a guide. Yep. If we do what our guide says, we'll get the result. Mm -hmm. You're in charge of the journey, so nobody's trying to control you. But even though you're in charge of the journey, you have a guide to show you the way. Mm -hmm. I, just, I used to watch them Tarzan movies when I was a kid, which was a trip when you was a young black kid. And <laughs> You know, them black folk been over there in Africa for 90 million years. Right. But you take a white bag to save them. Anyway. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> right? right? Black person go to church. Who is Jesus? White person. Mm -hmm. Right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're taught to believe that white people are our saviors. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And also taught to believe that white people are our enemies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Wow. Talking about crazy. messed up. <laughs> That's messed up. Yeah. That's messed up. Yeah. That's totally messed up. Yeah. And you wonder why we're crazy? Yeah. <laughs> you wonder why all of us are crazy? Yeah. We're crazy because we learn insane lessons. Uh -huh. So what happened when I wake up? What happened as I awaken? What happened as I started studying the truth? What happened as I, because I got on the spiritual path because of racism. So I'm thankful that I was born in the South. Without the racism that I encountered at my request, I wouldn't have been motivated to learn universal laws that operate regardless of race, creed, and color. That's what drew me to metaphysics. Not so I could manifest a car, but so I could go to the restroom. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah. I remember separate ones. Yeah. The white restroom yeah. had neon signs flashing on top of it, yeah. pump music pumping out of it, and the black toilet had was a hole in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> See, and as long as you believe it's real, you can't laugh at it. Yeah. Yeah. So those of you who think it's real, you're uncomfortable now. Mm -hmm. Those of you who recognize that I recognize is something that I created as a lesson for me to learn yeah. and knows why I'm able to talk about it is because I don't think white people are responsible yeah. for anything that I'm going through. I am white people. Right. I am white people. Yeah. I am white people. I am every woman in this room. Yeah. And I am every man in this room. I know how, what, how women feel. All they have to do is tune into the part of myself that's feminine. Right. Okay. It's there. I tune into it. And whatever I, about once a month, I get the cramps. <laughs> <laughs> like today, I have PMS. <laughs> I do, I have PMS right now. Pre-miracle syndrome. Oh, that's so cool. I like that. <laughs>
It's the right kind of PMS, ain't it? Yeah, that's cool. You understand? Uh-huh. <laughs> you got to laugh at it to go beyond it. Yeah. You have to laugh at it to get beyond it. I have to laugh at it to get beyond it. I have to laugh at it to get beyond it. I have to laugh at it to get beyond it. I have to laugh at it to get beyond it. And so if you can't laugh at your problems, your friends can. <laughs> I guarantee you, they laugh when you don't even know it. <laughs> and they're helping you get rid of your problems because they don't take them as seriously as you do. As a matter of fact, they take your problems so lightly, they don't even care about them. <laughs> Thank your saviors if they never get as serious about your stuff as you uh -huh. do. Be glad they don't focus in attention on the lack like you focus on it. Be glad they don't focus in on what you think of as your weaknesses like you focus in on it. Be glad they aren't concerned continually about your well-being. Be glad they don't. Then you'll be up the creek. They got all that concentrated God power focused in the direction of your life sucks. <laughs> all your friends think so. <laughs> everybody think so. Everybody don't lie because you want everybody to join with you on your suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they don't join with you, they don't love you. Your enemy will be glad to. You're right, honey. Your life really is pathetic. I just, it, I, did, I was paying for you just last night. I was thinking about all the stuff you go through and how hard but everything that happened to you is so bad. That's your enemy, but you don't even know it. You're like, oh, they must really care about me because they're seeing me as having the worst life ever. <laughs> At my request, mm. because I'm the one asking them to see me that way. Mm. And if they don't, I say they don't love me and they don't have compassion for me. Mm. I slammed my thing up in the car door one day, and my friend laughed so hard that it healed in two days. <laughs> <laughs> I got bad. <laughs> but it heals so fast, freak me out. So you got to laugh, you got to practice it like this. You got to be like. <laughs> you don't have an outside look concerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you inside you're cracking up. <laughs> because you know the mind is stronger than the body, yeah. and they're stronger than anything they think they're yeah. going through. Mm. You're not laughing out of cruelty. You're not laughing yeah. because you have malice. You're laughing at the absurdity of thinking that that person did not have the capability of bringing themselves to a healing place and allowing the Creator to function in their lives. That's why you're laughing, because that's what makes it the joke, because you believe in them so much you can't even, it's funny to you to even think they could not be loved. But you also know the part of them that believes in their nightmare, you don't want to tell them it's not real by laughing in their face. So what you want to say is, you know what, I know everything's going to be all right. You're safe now. Everything's going to be all right. I know. Go, go ahead and tell me what's up. Right. That everything's going to be all right. Mm. Yeah. Everything's going to be all right. You tell them they're safe now. Now, then you teach them to tell the difference. Well, you know, if somebody really loves you, they're going to see you as equal to them. They're not going to be acting superior to you and inferior to you. So remember that if someone's acting like they're different from you, that's not somebody you want to join with because that means that they can't give you the compassion, compassion that you would deserve because they don't see themselves as having the same issues as you. So if anything, they'd just be getting upset with you about being afraid. Huh. See, the truth teaches you how to tell the difference. So if I talk to somebody for 15 minutes, I know pretty much what I can do and can't do with them. But my number one rule is I want to do the thing that makes them feel the safest. And that's the rule I try to live by. What's going to make you feel the safest with me? That's what I want to happen. And if I think for one second that you're not going to feel safe, we ain't going to do that. We're going to cut that out. We're going to take that off the menu immediately. Because if there's something you're supposed to do with me, you'll be 100% totally willing to do it without fear. And I will too. But I can't pull that off all the time. So when sometimes I can't pull it off and I do it anyway, then I have to know that that's normal. That on the way to learning, you're going to sometimes not always be consistent in your love. 
Hmm. And sometimes you're going to make mistakes. But mistakes are for correction, not for punishment. The only kind of people that punish are people who want punishment. The only people who always want somebody else to get punished is the person who believe they deserve to be punished themselves. And they believe they deserve to be punished so much that they want to guarantee their own punishment by punishing someone else. Wow. Which is a guarantee that they will get the punishment that they want. Unless they change their mind. Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing as karma if you're willing to change your mind. Deep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to wake you up and I want you to wake me up and we are going to be awakened in ways that don't frighten us and that's really, 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 really gentle. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody this week that what they're upset about isn't real. Mm -mm. You tell them they're safe and okay and you're going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to this much. Would you acknowledge yourself? <laughs> yeah. 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 white people, then I have to love black people, yeah. and I have to love yellow people, and I have to love all people. Yeah. Because it's not, remember this, it's never real if it's only for you. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I know specialists hate statements like that. <laughs> it is not real if it's only for you. Anything that's real is always something that's available to everyone equally. That's what makes God unconditional love. Hmm. So don't ever expect anything to last permanently that's only for you to the exclusion of everyone else. It's built in, ending, it's built into it. You want what lasts forever. You want a love you can never lose. You want a love that never attacks. You want something that's always dependable. You don't want that stuff we give each other. That's completely conditional and a bargain. <laughs> now at first you're gonna do it. Yeah. Because you want specialness as much as everybody else does. Mm -hmm. But what you're gonna do because you're smart is you're gonna say, I want my special relationships to be used as a lesson in love and joy. That's all you gotta do. Hmm. I, I know I want specialness. I'm demanding specialness. I gotta have some specialness. <laughs> but I would love for my special needs to be met in a way that benefits everyone. That's awesome. That's all, that's all you have to do. Whether they go, we just go to miracle say you can't have no special relationship. I get some sticky in there. Yeah. <laughs> Cause the miracle thing you can't have no victory relationship. The only cause of miracle thing you can't have no victory relationship. And the cause that the cause of miracle said that you couldn't have a special relationship. It said you didn't need one. <laughs> That's different. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And then it says if you choose to have one, just ask that it be used for your gentle, loving, fun, pleasurable, alive, enlightening awakening. So one of you, so your your assignment this week is to have an orgasm for God. All right. <laughs> and people with guilty sex attitudes, they're alarmed right now. <laughs> and those who realize that it's innocent, they kind of got a little charge going. They kind of <laughs> people who are scared of the word, they're like, don't worry, you ain't gonna have none. <laughs> So you are safe. And those of you who are happy to talk, you are safe. All right. That's
felt so good to say? Yeah. That's how I can tell when I be telling the truth. I feel lighter. Don't it seem lighter? Yes, you do. Yeah, it's always floating. I'm just like, ooh. Yeah, okay. So, we're going to do the love offering. I appreciate you sharing with me. I do this full time in the world, so I thank you so much for anything that you share with me. Money, love, good thought, chewing gum. <laughs> Whatever it is you want to share. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I put all these classes on my on website, on my website and on Google. So if you Google my name, it'll take you straight to my website where you can watch hundreds of classes that are online to help us remember together. And you that know, comes in in Nebraska. They, all over the world. Because I used to have people ask me that. Why don't they just practice the course of miracles and do astrology? You know, I said, well, how can you yes. practice the course of miracles and be a secretary? <laughs> It's the same thing. <laughs> you know, is you, you know, you think, is you thinking you have something you got to do in the world in order to let stuff come through for you? It's not any different because you do something that the world says is okay. That doesn't make it any more legitimate. So you get freed. That's what I'm saying. So you get freed up from what people think. That's what you want to do. You want to get freed up from what people think, and you want to get freed up from what you think. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A loving right mind uh, teaches only to make you equal or the same as it. So somebody that loves you, they are seeing you as an equal. If they really love you, they're seeing you as an equal. They're not saying that they're better than you or that you're better than them, or that you're less than them, or they're less than you. So beware of anyone you are attracted to, and you're attracted to them because you think that they are unequal to you. Do you know that you believed what wasn't true about yourself? And because you believe what was not true about yourself, because you believe what was not true about yourself, that's what's causing any pain or challenges or obstacles or struggles that you're going through right now. Any, any struggle that you're going through right now is coming because you have forgotten the truth about yourself. So what is that truth that you have forgotten about yourself? You have forgotten that you are perfect. Now what does perfect mean? Perfect means complete. Perfect means complete, according to the Course in Miracles. That means that nothing is missing in you. Nothing is missing in you. Nothing is missing in me. Somebody say it with me. Nothing is missing in me. That's right, in me. Nothing is missing in me. Now close your eyes and listen to the voices. Nothing is missing in me. 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 Nothing is missing in you. Nothing is missing in you. Listen to it now. Nothing is missing in you. What? Nothing is missing in you. Say what? Nothing is missing in you. Nothing is missing in you. What about us? Nothing is missing in us. 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 Now this is a deep one. It is okay to have a lot of fun. It is okay to have a lot of fun. What? It is okay to have a lot of fun. It is okay to have a lot of fun. It is okay to have a lot of fun. Say what? It is okay to have a lot of fun. Say what? 
It is okay to have a lot of fun. Woo! It is okay to have a lot of fun. I let love in. I let love in. I let love in. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for coming out today. On Thursday, Course of Love from 7 to 8, you're invited. And our next Course of Miracles class is next Sunday at 1 o'clock. Pick out one thing you heard today that you want to kind of stick with. Let the rest of it go. All you need is one idea. That's it. That's all you need is one. All right? All right. Okay. Hugs are available. I love hugs. <laughs>